Okay, being 8.15, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, Avang. Here. Collins. Here. Doherty. Here. Uh, Tanya's online. Uh, Nowak. Here. Scala. Present. Vijek. Here. And I'm here. And is there a motion to uh, allow Tanya? Uh, Steve Doherty and, and Mr. Collins seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Welcome, Tanya. Okay, uh, motion for the minute approval from the previous meeting. Mr. Vijak? Second. Michelle Abank, second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, do we have any public comment? I don't think there's anybody signed in for him since. I know Shemung. Everybody else works for the county except for the seat. <laughs> I know Shimong Township was going to be coming this morning. She said she would be here to about 8.30 just to ask a question about the 2327 transportation plan. If, if everyone's okay with it, um, when we get to that point, um, I'll, I'll allow her to speak if that's okay yeah, with Yeah, I was going to pull that one anyway. So. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> member comments. Mr. Collins. Not knowing what's going to happen in a couple of weeks, I want to thank Joe and Jim for my time on the committee here. Um, it was very, very educational, and your staff as well. I always found very, very helpful. And I do appreciate it very much. Um, I've learned a lot, and uh, regardless of the outcome, it's information I'll take forward with, to pass on to people when I talk about transportation and accounting. So I want to thank you both very, very much. Thank you, Jack. Mr. Vichek. Thank you. Um, I had inquired uh, for a constituent in my area, um, and I had to contact, um, and I talked to Scott Hennings. The response from uh, the constituent was that Mr. Hennings was extremely polite, thorough, and clarified all the questions that uh, the constituent had. So with great thanks, I want to publicly acknowledge Mr. Hennings for the work that he did. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Okay. Well, thank you all. And, and uh, yes, I, as I figured out this morning, this is our last meeting before of the year. So it's been a pleasure. Anyway, let's move down to routine consent agenda. Anyone want to pull any? Mike? Uh, 5.10, please. Okay. Bob? I want 5.6. Okay, and just for everyone's awareness, the resolution five seven is is uh, in front of you. It just has the some of the numbers plugged in that were blank in the agenda. Just to make you aware of that. Okay, so those three. If there's no other ones. Uh, Tanya, did you have anything to pull? No, thank you. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda, consent agenda? Mr. Scala uh, moves. Ms. Avang seconds. Uh, any more discussion? We'll proceed to vote. Uh, Avang? Yes. Collins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. Uh, Nowak? Yes. Scala? Yes. Bijak? Yes. Uh, Tanya Ginger? Yes. I'll vote yes. 5.6. My question is. Can I make a motion? motion. Oh, I need a motion. Need a motion. Well, I'll make the motion. motion. All right, Bob uh, Nowak moves it. Mr. Doherty seconds it. Okay. Uh, I just wanted uh, a little explanation on this. There's three different things here that are causing, I think, uh, like a eight, $886,000 uh, increase in the bill. And, uh, you know, as I, as I read through it, uh, it seemed like some of these things, well, first was the, the delay of time. There was, there's an increase because we didn't start construction within the five years. It, am I understanding that right? Yes, sir. 
And then, um, then something about this, uh, which I don't really understand, the bulletin 70 to 75 changed to some standards. Yes. And, sir. and so there was an increase there. Um, and then the, the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, because of the Wood Creek, uh, and this, you know, that runs alongside uh, mm -hmm. Randall there. It, it just didn't seem didn't seem right to me that we're fighting our own other departments or governmental parties, and it's costing us eight hundred eighty six thousand dollars. So, you know, and I, and I apologize I didn't uh, call Scott yesterday, but I'm thinking maybe Scott or or you, Joe, can. Kind of explain why we're paying extra for these simple things. I'll give a real high level, and then Daryl can step in more with it. This is what happens when projects get delayed, and that we haven't had a significant change like this, like you say, the bulletin uh, seventy, uh, the change in bulletins. Yeah, that's those are just numbers. Eighty-nine. Yeah. Right. That's an updated version. We have no say in that. So those, and what have we seen with weather events? They're much more severe, right? So now all the standards are changing to catch up to that. So that's why it was applied to it. We didn't know it was going to change, but because the project went longer, all of a sudden now we've got to incorporate that in. That has required a substantial amount of coordination and engineering to address what is required in that. You're right, we don't have any say in the cost is passed on to whoever is the local agency that's moving projects through. Yeah, that's where I guess I don't I don't get that because the state of Illinois puts those standards together or is it well, well, in McHenry County? No, it's not McHenry. It's for everybody in the state that has to follow those. Yeah. So it's not specific to McHenry County and you have to follow them to obtain the permit. If you don't get a permit, you don't do the project. Yeah. It but then the, the one on the delay, because we was more than five years. Yeah, IDOT looks at it. Well, for one, your uh, clearances expire after a certain amount of time. So that means you got to go back through and update all those clearances and have the resource agencies review them. And then that's where delay is, too. Uh, for a lot of projects, Bob, the, the engineering isn't what holds it up. It's obtaining the, the permitting and the resource agency reviews. That they're not very well staffed. Yeah. So then, let me just go one step further. <laughs> is is there anything we can do with this? Because no, you know, I mean, it's not chump change. You know, you're almost talking about a million dollar increase that the taxpayers are paying for. Right. That are paying for these other taxing by you know or these other uh, organizations in the state of Illinois I mean it, it seems kind of goofy and it'll be every new project that moves forward has to adhere to the new standards just this happens to be that we had an existing contract and we already had stuff so yeah, yeah it's an addition for us but you will see prices going up in the future for new contracts because of these additional uh, yeah. Requirements. Well, that, yeah, that part I can understand. Right. But, I mean, we had something already in the, in the works. Yeah, but yeah, and you would think you would have a little bit of deference with it. They didn't, and Daryl and we asked, right, when we were at a coordination meeting, and they said no. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that was just you know my my point, and I just felt like uh, it's a big chunk of you know the twelve million, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just million dollars and just delays and it's costing us a million bucks that's man that's sad I think. so just my comments anyone else okay we'll proceed to vote Collins yes Doherty yes Nowak yes Scala yes Vichek yes Gingrich or Avang yes. Avang yes and I'll vote yes Motion carries. Uh, motion for 5.10. Mr. Collins, 
moves and the saving seconds. All right. Um, Are, are you here from Shimon? Yes. Okay, I know you called yesterday. You wanted to talk a little bit. Had a couple of questions on the on the bridge. I I kind of pulled this, so we pulled this to have this discussion a little bit, just to let you, if you had something to say about that bridge being closed, that road. Yeah. Don't want to put you on the spot here, but <laughs> come on up and introduce yourself to the microphone. I don't know if the microphone. We had put it down to one lane, and then the state came out and made it completely closed. Because that is like a clear way for a lot of emergency vehicles, buses, and people that come in from out of town. So, and people going to work up in Bowl Lake and so on. And we were just wondering, um, so I was talking with you yesterday, John. And so uh, it's not three million, it's actually 700,000. I think the line is wrong, or is it wrong on the paperwork? No, the, it's the yeah. county's portion is the 700. Yeah, the whole thousand structure is 3.5 million. Okay, so the whole structure is 3.5 million. All right, gotcha. So I, I just looking at that paperwork, I was a little confused. So, um, so you were talking about a temporary fix. What would that temporary fix do? No, I, I, what, what I wanted to ask, and that's why I had you here, so that we could ask if there's any way we could do, if it's a, if it's a safety issue, mm -hmm. if there's any way we could do, and I guess you explained it to me, the engineer, if we could do a, a temporary fix like we did up on, on in the Hebron area for those. Yeah. The, it's, and so it's still down to one lane. Why did they quit the one the one lane wasn't working? No, the structure kept the, deteriorating so bad that it the, didn't. This is the same structures that were built at the same time. There's a the, 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 yeah, they're they're the box beams that were used, and at that time, we're only assuming that the design was to do the cheapest one possible, mm -hmm. and the service life hasn't been that long. And yeah, it's, so it's still not safe in one lane. It's not. So that's why when you see it, it depends on where the deficient structure or mm -hmm. portion of the structure is. So sometimes we can shift the lane over. Right. Sometimes we can't. We'll put up a stop sign. That's no longer the case here for this structure. Okay. Yeah. And, and I believe the answer we were talking yesterday, and I called you about it was the engineering would have to be performed before you could even decide whether or not to try a temporary fix. Right, because you really need to determine whether that substructure <coughs> is sufficient or not to do a bridge deck. And I know that the, the DOT staff team has talked with, uh, I believe, Bob Nystrom on the, exactly this, on the different things that could be done. And that cost for the engineering that would come out of our pocket or well, historically, we have uh, split that 80-20. If we're able to secure federal funding, we've submitted for federal funding on this project, correct, Daryl? We have submitted for a grant. So, so we've submitted for a grant for it, so depending on what the requirements are the grant, but uh, uh, that's historically what it is. There has been uh, discussions at this committee uh, to look at to have the townships put more in for those match amounts. They have all been included in those in meetings. That, it's been done here at the, the committee. The 80-20 thing you're talking about? Or the 2010? Well, the 20% the is... Right. The 20%. The 20%, the not the 80. The 80 of that's the 3.5 right. right. is, is the federal government. Right. The 20%. The 20% to be split by the township and the county. Right. Right. Okay. And understand, we are the only county of 102 counties in the state of Illinois that spend any dollars on township bridges. And then, um, so we're looking at 228 uh, for this to be done? To start the engineering. Yes. To start the engineering. Yes. Well, okay. 20, 23, the engineering starts. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. 
right? 2023, next year engineering starts. Engineering. Yes, I'm sorry. So if I could just say one thing about that. So we, because this structure was closed during the summer, after we had developed our 2023 budget, this is gonna be something we've been working with the finance department on adding a budget uh, floor, board floor amendment to a budget for FY23 to include funding for this structure in 2023's budget. At this point in time, it's not in the draft budget, but we've been working with Kerry to see if we can add it to the budget for next year. So. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so, and the other thing of this, if we wanted to do something with that bridge, we could. If, if we got um, the electors to come together and get money together for that, or I'm I, just I don't, from that's up to your road commissioner. Okay. That's up to them. Okay. on what you want to do with it and yeah you can do that you're still going to have to hire an engineer and, right engineer right and it's the still the then you would have to personally apply if you want to do it yourself apply. right to see right and we could get help with from you guys in we have always helped with the well, townships yes. with it because most you know who to, what happens to well i believe you've already spoke with daryl uh -huh. several times so daryl will be able to give you all the exact same things I'm saying here if he hasn't already. Right, okay. I'm just coming forward because we've got people that are willing to move a little faster than what we've been told. So. Okay, well, we just wanted to give you the opportunity because I know you had a lot of questions, so that's okay. And I, you know, I reached out to the service department for the fire department. They do have, a, you know, different routing going on in the school bus. There are situations there could be a hindrance. So. Okay. okay. All right. Thank, thank you, you for so much. thank you for coming. Okay. Does anybody else have any discussion on this? Hey, well, that just that whole discussion just raised a question for me. I I thought you had said at one point that we were required to be involved which is why we are involved. We're in, required to be involved with what? The, the township bridges. That we, we were required, you as the head honcho had to at least file paperwork and like you that is, That's for inspections. Okay. Bridge inspection. But not for? Funding? No. <clears throat> We are not required to put funding in for township bridges. No, not for required sure. to put funding in, required to file a paperwork to get the 80-20 map. Nope. We so we not. could technically be, technically we could be out of township bridges altogether yes. without any problems. Yes. Okay. That was not my understanding from before, but mm -hmm. thank you for clarifying that. Yes. I, you know, the next county board is going to have kind of a strategic plan retreat uh, in January. And I kind of have a running list of issues that I think need to be revisited with this as one. I, I, I think it, it's not something that we can change overnight. We've, we've weaned township highway departments off of this in, in some respects, and, and, and to expect them to assume all this responsibility overnight won't be realistic. But if we set a date on the calendar, that, that may be some, you know, some period in the future, five, ten years out, that we could transition away from. I think it's worth discussing. And I'll say one, my one point on this is, is I'm not crazy about us not participating in it. I think we need to, because it's, it's not just a town, a bridge, even though it's in a township, isn't a township function by itself because all of the through traffic and everything. And I think to leave it up just to the townships, you're gonna have bridges that will never get fixed because they're just not gonna have the funds to do it. <laughs> and if nothing, they'll be patched up, and that's the, that becomes a safety issue and at that point to me. So, uh, just because those some of those road commissioners are going to have severe funding issues to do that. So, anyway, anybody else or anything else? Well, my only other comment. I, I so it, in our five-year plan, it, as you see, most of the bridges are up in the north bus quadrant of our county that's where it seemed like 70 percent of them were being done um, and again this discussion we're all having is you know my issue with 
this because I, I want to have that discussion. And, and again, I, I agree with you, Jim. I don't. I think there needs to be a sliding scale. I think they're based on township's ability to acquire revenue, and based on you know, I mean, all the townships are relatively speaking the same size, except for the ones on the far east. But you know, relatively speaking, we you know you you can't just expect them to pay all of the 20%. But like we discussed here, you know, there are townships that have a much better uh, funding structure because of the size and the population that I think can burden more versus our townships that are to the west that don't have that ability, so. And I know staff has been speaking with everyone collecting those numbers too. Yes. So. I'm sorry. So on a bridge like this, how did how does it get to this point? I mean, in other words, we're doing inspections every so many years. How I mean, how does this only be like up one lane and then up close it? For this one specifically, Daryl, you can talk to that. Sure. With these older box beam style bridges, they they tend to deteriorate in a way that they're fairly linear and then they drop off. Okay. We have certain steel bands underneath that when they get exposed, they don't, they're not, no longer considered load bearing. And when those expose themselves, we have to react. Okay. And when they go, they go, they're completely gone. So when you're factoring in the loads on the bridge, that one box beam is totally eliminated from Wow. load carrying capacity okay. and, it, and it could fall in the middle of the bridge right it could be an edge that we could maybe use a lane like we did on pioneer road earlier this year where we were able to close half the bridge and still keep half open Grant road wasn't able to do that our inspections had said one thing and then the state looked at the inspection and said no we have to close this bridge so that was the sequence that happened for Grant road just to keep the general public safe as they're traveling around but in general, like, these box beams kind of sit there like this and kind of then, okay, all right. And the problem with all of them, why you see so many bridges in the program is because all of our bridges, where a lot of them were built at the same time using the same method of the box beams. Okay. How many are those in the, in the Canary County? How many are left? Of the box beams? I, Boy, I don't know. Idea. I'd have to look, but generally, I think we're probably in the 40 to 70 range. We have a lot of bridges in the county. Yeah, there's a ton. In this county, there's a lot. And, and the thing that exasperates it also is that, you know, you go up to a point that the bridge is okay, then it gets load posted, but then all you need is one overweight vehicle going over that, and it causes a tremendous amount of damage. Okay. And that, and that can accelerate that also. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Anything else? Okay. Let's proceed to vote. Mr. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Nowak? Yes. Mr. Scala? No. Mr. Vichek? Yes. Ms. Avang? Yes. Uh, let me see, Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Gingrich? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Okay, do I have a motion for 5.11? Sure. Mr. Vichek moves and Mr. Uh, Doherty seconds. Okay, discussion. Who pulled this one off? Bob did. Bob. I did. Um, this is similar to the other one. And um, a couple years ago, when I was liaison to the conservation district, uh, you know, there at the meetings and listening to <laughs> the money that they received for this mitigation, wetland mitigation, I thought, wow, that's nice, you know. And I, but I'm thinking in my mind, uh, you know, kind of because of my background as a contractor, I'm thinking like, wow, you know, that's nice for the contractors. They have an easy way out. They can pay the conservation some money, and um, they can mitigate some of their wetlands or their detention and so on and so forth. So, so anyway, it's uh, coming along, and I'm reading this, and and then now I'm on the other side of the table, I guess. And here we're paying almost a half a million dollars to the conservation district for our mitigation, and um, you know for credits, buying their you know the credits. And, and I'm thinking, I don't know, is there fairness in that? <laughs> uh, 
uh, you know, and here now again, once again, we're talking about uh, you know another governmental entity uh, that we're paying, you know, the conservation district versus the county. So it's coming out of the right pocket or coming out of the left pocket. So I, I don't object to it, but I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. I it just little if anybody has any better reasoning behind this uh, you know to spend a half a million dollars I, I'd surely like to hear it uh, but it just it just seems kind of unbalanced you know that we're well, a government it, agent just passing money back and forth it has nothing to do with passing money back and forth between governmental agencies no. we are required to purchase stream or wetland credits at whatever ratio is determined by the quality of what we impact. So either you're gonna pay it to a private entity in which their banks are dwindling, yeah. or we're gonna give it to the conservation district that has some extra area or area that's available. All we're doing here is protecting ourselves as a county so that we can build our projects. Right. We would pay this half million dollars anyways. We're just securing where we can get the banking. It's yeah. unknown what happens if we can't get the banking. Then your costs are likely going to go up substantially. And that if you can't get that, if we're trying to get new banks and that stuff, I don't know what rate these private uh, or landowners or companies are creating wetland banks to make that they're available. If not, then that's probably additional coordination that would be required with the resource agency because they want to keep it normally within the same watershed Yes, there's two different groups that, or three different groups that we have to work from a permitting side. Illinois Department of Natural Resources, we have to mitigate at, at least one and a half to one for our wetlands that we impact. And that can go up to five to one or six to one or sometimes greater, depending on the quality. They want to keep it in a sub watershed. So for us, Kishwaukee watershed or the Fox River watershed. Army Corps of Engineers, they look at it a bit bigger view. They have the same or similar mitigation ratios but they, that they assign, but they want to stay just in the Illinois watershed. So that would combine both. And then we have our local um, watershed development ordinance through planning and development. They look at a sub watershed as well, Kishwaukee and Fox. So we have to have resources in both of those watersheds in order to meet the various permitting requirements that we need to meet to develop our projects. No, oh, okay. All right, well that that explains a little bit more. Uh, you know, and I, like I said, when I was at Conservation District and uh, going through that, it was kind of different. It was a different side of the table. So it was really nice to see that money come in for the Conservation District. Okay, so, all right, thank you. That's all. You're welcome. I know we can't tie it in, and it <clears throat> kind of has nothing to do with it, but we have e easements on like a lot of these bridge projects. In the past, we've turned these easements over to land conservancies, one and a couple other ones. And always, it always stuck in my throat a little bit when when we had to buy those back for like the Randall Road project and everything. None of that could be used for this, could it? Those no. that, if we kept them? No, it's okay. not an identified banking right. okay. site. If it was an identified site, yes, but no. We could right. do our own. Don't know if we want to get into that business, right. but we could do our own. Right. right. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Let's proceed to vote. Uh, start with Mr. Nowak. Yes. Mr. Scala. Yes. Mr. Vijek? Yes. Ms. Abang? Yes. Ms. Collins? Yes. Uh, Mr. Doherty? Yes. And Ms. Gingrich? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Motion carries. Now we're down to new business. Uh, CMAP plan update? Yep. Scott, you want to give an introduction here? Yeah, I, uh, I just wanted to make everybody aware. So <clears throat> every Every 10 years or so, the region, the region develops a comprehensive plan for um, transportation land use. And this, this comprehensive plan that the region, CMAP, has developed is called the ONTO 2050 plan. 
Well, they have to periodically update their regional plan. And so that just occurred, what was it, three weeks ago, Pete, two weeks ago? Um, so both the MPO Policy Committee and the CMAP Board met uh, mid middle of October and they approved the ONTO 2050 plan update, which is, again, it's the region's plan. Um, there's a lot of information. I'm not going to go through everything. I really just wanted to point you to the website that if you are interested in this, you can go on yourself later after the meeting. Um, you can kind of you can scroll through different chapters of the plan, including one thing I wanted to bring up was the, the uh, where is it? Regionally significant projects. So uh, anytime a project in the region uh, is over a certain threshold of cost, um, it's, it's considered a regionally significant project. And the region, uh, if it's going after federal funding, needs to prioritize these projects because there's only so much funding to go around and the region needs to make decisions based on what's best for this region. So I think this report was developed um, here in McHenry County. There are three projects that were included in this region, regionally, regionally significant projects uh, report. Um, one is Illinois 47 between Huntley and Woodstock. Um, the other one is Illinois 31 between Crystal Lake and the city of McHenry. And then the last one is the Metro upgrades uh, along the UP Northwest line. So all three of those projects were included in the fiscally constrained uh, regionally significant project list. And what that means is that they're eligible for federal funding going forward. And the region itself has, has said, we think these are great projects that we are gonna support as a region. So um, there's more you can read in this report, but I just wanted to mention that because I know Illinois 47 comes up at this committee quite a bit. Um, and you know, again, it's important to know that the region does support that project. So um, if there's any questions, I can kind of help you offline or if I can attempt to answer questions here. But uh, again, I just want, there's more information on Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Anyone, any questions for Scott? All right, so let's move down to staff recognition. All right, uh, <laughs> we have some good news. We have some uh, recognition in introducing two new maintenance workers. And Bob Hensel, our maintenance supervisor, is filling in today for a couple of other supervisors uh, to introduce our two newest members to our team. Bobby, the floor is all yours. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, like Joe said, we have two new employees here at the DOT. Uh, the gentleman immediately to my left, uh, this is Scott Doty. Uh, Scott lives in Huntley, Illinois. Uh, before he came here, he worked at Dean Foods for 32 years. Uh, Scott is a graduate from Huntley High School. Um, in his spare time, he enjoys working on cars and spending time with his family. So, um, Scott, welcome to the DOT. Okay. Thank you. Look forward to working here. Thank you, Scott. He was a skinny little guy last time I saw him. Just a <laughs> oh, little, little guy. <laughs> <laughs> a small world, huh? <laughs> I was wondering if it was that was him. Yeah. Uh, uh, next up is uh, Brian Bailey. Uh, Brian lives in Harvard, Illinois, uh, with his wife and uh, two stepdaughters. Yeah. So. Uh, before working for us here, Brian also worked at Dean Foods for 14 years. Uh, he's a graduate of Harvard High School. Uh, in Brian's spare time, he likes to uh, do projects around his house, uh, whether it's working on his barn or just anything at home. So, uh, Brian, welcome to the DOT. Appreciate the opportunity. Feels good to be working again for a couple months. <laughs> What are they going to do? All right, thank you, everybody. The maintenance workers, both Welcome. of them. Welcome. Yeah. Thank Welcome. Thank you. All right, old business staff reports. Um, included in your packet was an update on our long range transportation program, but uh, Jasmine JP, give an update. Scott? If you want to give a brief update about those packets, thank you. Good morning. So, uh, provided the packet was just a brief update of where we're at in the process of developing the McHenry County Moves 2015 LRTP. Uh, we have been coordinating with our consultant team, HDR, and have provided a uh, existing and future baseline conditions report, as well as a performance measures memo. So, uh, the staff is currently reviewing that and will be working with 
and HDR to finalize that document uh, in terms of the next coming months, uh, we anticipate receiving a financial <coughs> assessment memorandum as well as an impactful trends and emerging technology section. So a lot of the technical work now is being done on developing the content for the plan uh, following the public engagement that we had previously. Um, so more to come in the next few months and I can answer any questions. And I fully expect, too, that with the new committee being seated in uh, December, we'll probably have to do, we might have to take a step back first, update the new committee of all the work we've done to date, and then we'll proceed with uh, you know, going forward again in the new year. So. Thank you. That is it for staff report. Okay. Um, there is a need for executive session. Um, uh, land acquisition, pending litigation. Yes. Can we have contract negotiations on there or personnel? For exact session we yes. do. Yes. Yes. So yes. I need a motion to go. Mr. Vicek, move so. Mr. Collins seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're going into executive session.